37 of our 60 consecutive days of financial learning, brought to you by Wanda. I'm your host, Deborah Warner, and we are happy that you are joining us tonight. Welcome to the Zoom call, and also welcome to viewers on our OLN Caribbean YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, and share. We are inviting you tonight to take a look at an opportunity in the midst of all that's going on right now. At One Life, we are excited to have a solution to a global financial change that we know must come. We are doing this because we understand that in community and working together, we make our way forward, onward forward. Right now, there are many, many things out of our control. The list is too long. However, let's use our energy and time to pursue what we can change about ourselves and our circumstances starting now. Our presenter tonight is Andal Newton. He is a fire rescue technician and instructor. In the field of emergency response, that's his profession. And although he has such a serious job, he's always smiling and in good humor. He joined One Life in 2017. He's married with two daughters who are also in the business. What I've observed about Andal is that he's very consistent, committed, and reliable, and he shares his knowledge freely. I met him about two years ago. Me being someone newly introduced to this company, I really appreciated his amazing ability to make it clear and simple for me to understand. Andal is a ruby round independent marketing associate in this company. And tonight you will see what a fantastic fintech consultant he is. He knows what he's talking about. So please welcome our presenter tonight, Andel Nielsen. Over to you, Andel. All right, good night, good night. Can you all hear me? Can you yes, hear me, Debbie? Yes, all we right, can loud and clear. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I didn't know I had such an impact on your life. I hope I'm, I can impact some more lives tonight. Yeah. But tonight, as I share my screen, stand by. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Right. Okay. So tonight, folks, as I am represented tonight, I am coming across a bit different tonight because you know, every presenter have their different style. But tonight I want to take you down a little bit of a religious line. And forgive me, I know most of us belong to different and have different beliefs where religion is concerned. So just bear with me a little bit as I share. I wanna take you back in time. But before we move, I always like this slide. Imagine this quarantine period, because this is the time we are in right now. As your retirement days, where there is no work, you get no pay, your income stops, but somehow you know your expenses will continue. But if you fail to prepare, and this is the part I want to stress on tonight, if you fail to prepare now, you will probably suffer in the future, asking others for support for support that you should be responsible for. And as a father that hits home, as a husband that hits home, because as the man of the house, as the Godhead of my home, I am the one that's supposed to provide. And I thank God for this business opportunity coming my way three years ago, that I can safely say that I have prepared for my family. What about you? Those of you that are listening to the sound of my voice tonight, whether you're seeing it, you're viewing this live on YouTube, or you may view it later on, I want you to think about this. Are you prepared? Let's look at what Noah, what Noah went through. And I want you to pay a little attention to some, and we're not going to watch the whole video, just a short piece. But I want you to pay attention to what was said to Noah in this video and what was said by the people he tried to help in this video. Sorry about that, let's go back.
technical difficulties as usual. All day this thing playing. All right. So apparently, Noah doesn't want to speak tonight for whatever reason. But we're all familiar with the story of Noah. When Noah got a vision from God, letting him know to prepare this ark, this boat, this large boat that he can take his family in, invite others to come along for safety because it was about to rain for 40 days. Take a pair of each animal to start a new life. And people laughed at Noah. They didn't listen. But I want you to come in our time now and look at a group of people who also didn't listen. Because you see, when I joined this business three years ago, I remember in my presentation, when I attended my first presentation, one thing stood out to me is there is about to be a financial crash again. There was one in 2008, and there's another one that is about to come, whereby the US dollar was definitely expected to die. It was definitely expected to fall. And you know, once the US dollar falls, it affects all of us. But a lot of people didn't listen, including the US. Let's pay attention to the congressman here. Representative Randy Weber, Texas. Let us pray. Almighty God, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth here in the halls of Congress, in our nation's capital. Lord, may your will be done. Father, you said if we would confess our sins one to another, you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, I, you also said that you would heal from heaven and hear from heaven and heal our land. Lord, I'm confessing, but just a, several of the sins our nation has been so emboldened to embark upon. Father, you say in your word that your word, the, the man who meditates on your word is like a mighty oak tree. Blessed is he if he meditates on it daily. But Lord, we have endeavored to try to kick your word out of public schools. Father, we have endeavored to kick, take the Bible out of classrooms, the Ten Commandments off the walls. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Father, we think we're so smart. We've replaced your word and your precepts with drug-sniffing dogs, with metal detectors, with uniformed police officers in our schools. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Father, we've trampled on your institution, holy institution of holy matrimony and tried to rewrite what it is, and we've called it an alternate lifestyle. Father, oh, Father, please, please forgive us. Lord, we have gone to killing the most innocent amongst us. Your servant Moses warned in Deuteronomy 30, 19 for us to choose life so that we and all our descendants might live. Father, we're killing our descendants, and we're calling it a choice. Oh, God in heaven, forgive us, please. Lord, we've even disregarded the wisdom of Solomon. Lord, the wisdom of the Proverbs, where you say the slave will be, bar will be the borrower will be slave to the lender. $20 trillion in debt, nations have to be laughing at us. Father Abraham Lincoln said that we have forgotten to pray to the one that made us. Lord, forgive our sins. Father, help us. Help us to get back on your precepts, on your path to a true understanding of blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Lord, let that please be us. Don't remove your hand of protection from us, Father, please. Lord, forgive us our manifold sins. In your great mercy, bring us back to you. Father, I beg of you. I plead with you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Wow. Tonight, folks, I want to invite you to the financial arc of safety. You know, when you look back at the video, I'm sorry the video didn't play with Noah. When Noah received the vision to build his ark, the reason I wanted to show the video tonight is because I want to make a comparison, a comparison with Dr. Ruja. 
Dr. Ruja had a vision. She had a vision to create this special cryptocurrency. Now there are several out there today. There are over 5,000 cryptos, but she created a special cryptocurrency that has 120 billion coins, enough for the entire world of 7.2 billion persons. And she shared her vision with some of us. Some of us saw her vision and we got on board and we got into the ark. And because the ark hadn't set sail yet, some even jumped up saying the rain wouldn't come. You know, three years ago, I was told that this crash was about to come, this financial crash. No one anticipated or knew that the pandemic would have been part of the reason for this crash. But here it is today, the rain has started to fall. And I'm saying to you, the rain may fall for two more years to come, but we are going to fill this ark. I am encouraging you to get on board now into this ark of safety. The company I'm speaking about is One Life. Let's look at the mission of this company. It's to start with, it's a network. And the One Life Network's mission is to enable a global community of web users to take active part in using and improving new cutting edge digital products and services. The aim is to increase the quality of life of the members. Think about this to provide alternative and equal access to practical and relevant financial education. So when Dr. Ruja had her vision, her vision was so that we can go out and tell people, recruit people, tell people about this financial education so that we can recruit, recruit sufficient persons to fill that up. Those who jump off, you know, I have a friend that tell me something one day, he said, less soldier, more ration. And I interpret that to mean presently, those who jump off the ark, there is 120 billion coins for those of us that remain. And we're gonna ignite a natural educational evolution of people. Tonight, our target is 10 million users, 1 million merchants in the next two years. Folks, I say to you tonight, if you are not on board, the rain has started to fall. In the next two years, I guarantee you, there will be sufficient water for this ark to set sail. And those, there will be people climbing, trying to get on board at that time, like in the days of Noah, but it might be too late. You see, this is the reason why we are doing this for 60 days straight. And it all started during this pandemic time. And you know, coincidentally, I want to also make another comparison. The book of Noah, as we read from the King James version of the Holy Bible, Dr. Ruja's vision tonight, as fate would have it, the captain that is about to steer the ship is also by the name of Cordell King James. What a time. I tell you, get on board before it's too late. This is a growing network of over 3.5 million persons in over 194 countries. And we are scattered all over the world, as you can see. We are a global company. Listen to what Robert Kiyosaki had to say, and I like him, you know. So you will see a lot of slides that speaks to what he has said in the past, because you know why? Show me your friends and I tell you who you are. This is a wealthy man. Who do you intend to listen to? And he says that the richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else look for work. So let's just evaluate. The work. Let's evaluate the job. Let's evaluate where technology is going. And do you think that based on your job, the way technology is changing, will you be ready? Will you be ready for the new job market that is before us? Or will you be like this guy here, where he is having a conversation with his wife? And the wife said, honey, what are you doing? He said, I am reading a book. She said, then why are you crying? He said, because the ending of the book is very sad. She said, what book is that? Friends, it is not a novel. It is not a love story. It's not a horror story, but it's a bang book. And this may seem funny, but to many of us 
we have more months than salary. And our bank book is empty. You know, you go to school and they tell you, study your work, get a nice job. Yeah, and we all do it. But for some reason, the end of that book is a, always a sad book. I wonder why. Folks, technology has been improving and changing with time. We know too well that phones are no longer like this. We know what we have today for phones. We know that everything the internet has affected, where it comes to even sending mails, the music industry, the movie industry, and even with the cars, we go on driverless cars and even driverless trucks. But the world is also going into the field of AI. Are you prepared for the work that is the workers that is required in this time? Listen to this video. Google, um, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft are all moving ahead uh, at a great speed in improving this artificial intelligence software. So it's very exciting. Software is going to solve that where it'll look at all the new information and present to you, knowing about your interests, what would be most valuable. So making us more efficient. We're focusing on or what, what we've talked about on autonomous systems. And we sort of see it as the mother of all AI projects. So autonomy is something that's incredibly uh, exciting for us. We'll see where it takes us. Wouldn't it be wonderful if someday we got to the point where there were robots every place, they were running farms, they were running Apple, they were running Berkshire Hathaway, and all you had to do was one person could punch a button at the start of every morning and all the goods and services that we're getting now would be turned out by robots. It is seeping into our lives in all sorts of ways that we just don't notice. We're just getting better and better at it, and we're seeing that happen uh, in every aspect of our lives, from medicine to transportation to uh, how electricity is distributed. And uh, it promises to create a vastly more productive and efficient economy. Uh, and if properly harnessed, can generate uh, you know, enormous uh, prosperity for people, opportunity for people, uh, can cure diseases that we haven't seen before, uh, can make us safer because it eliminates uh, inherent human error uh, in a lot of uh, work. Uh, artificial intelligence is going to be extremely helpful and, it, and the risk that it gets super smart, that's way out in the future and uh, probably worth talking about. But now what we're seeing is that for the first time, computers can see as well as humans. That's pretty incredible. Uh, NHTSA did a study on, on Tesla's autopilot version one, which is relatively primitive, and found that it was a 45% reduction in highway accidents. And that's despite autopilot one being just version one. Um, version two, I think, will be at least two or three times better. That's the current version that's running right now. Um, so the, the rate of improvement is really dramatic. Uh, we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital superintelligence is one which is symbiotic with humanity. AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. You know, I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. And anytime you work with technology, you need to learn to harness the benefits and while minimizing the downsides. You know, stepping back, when you think about, you know, a lot of problems in the world, today it's because we typically have a constraint on resources. AI for the first time, I think over time, offers a different construct. Things which are constrained and look like a zero-sum game today may not be so in the future. Take education, for example. It's really difficult to educate people in a cost-effective way. AI may fundamentally change that equation. It may make it possible for us to have clean, cheap, renewable energy for the future. So I think a lot of things will play out in more positive ways than people think. I think probably by end of next year, self-driving will be will encompass essentially all modes of driving and be 
at least 100 to 200 percent um, safer than a person by the end of next year. We're talking maybe 18 months from now. The idea that there's going to be a general AI overlord that subjugates us or kills us all, I think is not something to worry about. I think that is overhyped. First of all, we don't know, we're nowhere close to knowing how to build a general AI, something that could set its own objectives. But second of all, I think it's unlikely that such a thing's first instincts would be to exterminate us. So I'm optimistic about that one and certainly don't think we need to worry about it today. Are you ready for the new upcoming job market? Those of you who believe that the JOB will work, you had to be an AI engineer or something in the near future, otherwise you will become obsolete. Tonight, money has also been evolving as we know. We know of the battering system, whereby you have something I want, I have something you want, we exchange, and that's how money was considered. Anything you and I accept for goods and services. And money transformed over the years, gold and silver shackles, number of things. And then it went into the paper currency, which is the era where I grew up in. Now, the thing about the paper currency, today it is simply just what it is, a piece of paper with some markings on it. It is not backed by anything anymore. However, we went into the plastic, we went into the digital, such as PayPal and all the others, but they all tie right back in to the paper currency, which has no value. It is not backed by a physical commodity and the biggest risk of the fiat currency is becoming worthless due to hyperinflation. So here comes cryptocurrency as money has once more evolved. And this is what we are trying to educate you on tonight. So let's look at what others are saying about cryptocurrency. So what is cryptocurrency? It's a medium of exchange like normal currency. It's an electronic currency in the form of digital codes. Each coin has its own unique code, like the serial number on the paper dollar. The value is created by supply and demand, just like gold, because we have a finite amount of the cryptocurrency. As I said, one coin is 120 billion. I don't think it have another cryptocurrency that the blockchain can create that amount of coins but we can create 120 billion. But what causes the price of it to go up? The demand for it. Based on the supply and the demand for it, the price will go up. It's inflation proof and low fees to do transaction with it. It requires no middleman, and this is the biggest part. So it brought back in the bartering system for you and I. Money can be sent instantly and instantly globally that is. Others are saying that cryptocurrency are protocols that allow the validation of transactions without the need for the third parties, such as banks, as I mentioned earlier on. Is it innovative? Of course, cryptocurrency has the potential to impact various aspects of the financial market and the wider economy. What about its value? The value of digital currency depends on the supply and demand, as I mentioned before. Therefore, they are often compared to gold, hence called virtual gold. The more a cryptocurrency is used, the more its demand and value rises. And as we go forward, I can show you that- President of the Bankers Association, Nigel Batiste says, whether we like it or not, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency are here to stay. A cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency, such as Bitcoin, a digital payment system. Blockchain is a digitized public ledger of all cryptocurrency transactions. Batiste says while central banks around the world might be concerned about the disruptions caused by blockchain technology, it could be useful. Many of the central banks, or at least the more progressive central banks, are developing these regulatory sandboxes that people could, could, could be playing in and doing things without destabilizing the system. He says it's something that should be considered in Trinidad and Tobago. The absence of it will cause one of two things to happen. Either innovation will be, sta will be stifled, or you will find yourself in a situation where you are destabilizing the system. So it's something which I hope will be, will be introduced by a central bank here 
early 2019. Meanwhile, Senior Manager of Financial Technology and Information Security at the Central Bank, Avinda Barrett, says the bank is taking a measured approach to cryptocurrency. We're engaging with our peers regionally and internationally. We, we are closely working with the Bank of Canada, with the Bank of England, with various other banks who, who are actively experimenting with this technology and we're learning from them. Now as for another blockchain benefit. Then one that I know RBC will be particularly happy about is if blockchain could help us in, 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 in placing less reliance on cash. The Bankers Association president was speaking at a function hosted by the association on understanding financial technology disruptors. There is a view that the, that the blockchain, right, and, I, and I share that view, could open up for the, for the SME sector cheaper sources or, or, or cheaper means of making themselves ready to access the financial sector. Judy Kanhai, CNC3 Business Watch. So this was a conversation that was had by the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago back in 2018, where the president said he hoped by at least 2019, he would accept blockchain technology and digital currency. But here it is, he went ahead in 2019 and print his brand new portfolio on the hundred other notes. But the ironic thing about it is, you can purchase a certain amount of goods with that this year, this same hundred dollars, this pretty hundred dollars, this year 2020. And come I'm hearing someone speaker. And come 2021, this same hundred dollars will never be able to buy the same amount of goods and services for you. Why is that? We come to that. So whether it is the Trinidad and Tobago hundred dollars, the US hundred dollar notes, the euro, the pound, whichever one that is fiat currency, fiat currency is guaranteed to die. But tonight, the one coin cryptocurrency that we want to speak to you about, we want to tell you that that coin has been having a steady growth. And disregard whether the coin will go up or not. What we want to say to you, unlike your fiat currency, it is not subject to inflation and it will not die. So let's look at some of the people who need cryptocurrency in the world. So the world has over 2.5 billion persons that are unbound for whatever reason, whether it's religious reasons, they live in remote places, some just don't trust the banks, they don't use banks. But these people all have access to the internet, they all have smartphones today, but in order to shop online, what do they need? They need a credit card, a debit card, where can you get this in the bank? So which means they have no access to shopping online. This is how cryptocurrency will help these people to be able to shop online and not just any cryptocurrency. I'm talking here about the one point cryptocurrency and you will understand as I go further in my presentation. What about remittance services? A lot of people work overseas in different countries and have to send money to their family back in their land. It's a very, very expensive transaction, one that they have no choice, they have to use. Because if you're working abroad, you wanna send money back home to support your family, you will use this system. Cryptocurrency can avoid you from having to go through the system where you pay a lot of high fees. Global trade, it can also aid in global trade in the buying and selling of goods. The ease of settlement, cross-border purchases, any part of the world you can make purchases. The cost of fraud, negative because of the blockchain, which we'll speak about a little, in a little bit. Restrictions on where and what you can buy or sell. What about protection of your income and your wealth? Again, speaking about the financial crash in 2008, many countries just started printing money. That creates what they call inflation. And they make us believe that inflation with the price of goods go up. It's not that the price of goods go up, but the more they print money, the value of your currency continues to die. Cryptocurrency can aid where that is concerned. So the first cryptocurrency was Bitcoin. It was introduced to the world back in 2009 after the crash in 2008. The blockchain produces 21 million coins. 
at all. In the year 2013, this coin having started at 10 cents US back in 20, 2009, in the year 2013, it rose to 1,200 US for one. In the year 2017, December, it went to almost 20,000 US for one. But the problem with the Bitcoin is the fact that it rises and falls. It's very volatile. Merchants are not attracted to a currency like that. So let's talk about the blockchain, which is the digital technology behind cryptocurrency. And not just cryptocurrency, the blockchain is innovative. So the blockchain is a digital technology that records and verifies transactions. How is it innovative? It changes the way many industries operate, including the financial market, creates cost-effective business networks. Is the blockchain safe? The blockchain ledger can track and trace anything of value. It eliminates any attempt of fraud, duplicity, and fraudery. Governments around the world would have a hard time accepting blockchain technology because you see that just this last piece here where it eliminates any attempt of fraud, duplicity, and fraudery. Show me an honest government and I'll move to your country in the morning. The blockchain is disrupting. It will disrupt the banking and finance, real estate, music, auditing, education, different industries. The blockchain can be applicable to. But Bitcoin being the first cryptocurrency was not designed for the way it is being used today. As you see here, peer to peer. The idea behind cryptocurrency was to bring back the peer to peer transactions between you and I, where it requires no middleman. But as in everything else, man decide to use it in another way. They decide to buy it when it's low and sell it when it's high. So they use it more for trade. It is not the coin that would be attracted to merchants because a merchant would not want to sell me something today and receive $300 worth in Bitcoin. And then tomorrow he ends up with 250 because the price of Bitcoin dropped. If it rises, he'll be happy. But is that a chance he can take? No. So let's talk about one coin. No one, however, buys one coins or tokens. We sell educational packages. And along with these educational packages, there's a lot of freebies and you know, free is always good. So we have something called free tokens and free education that comes with the packages. We'll talk about that as we go along. We are neither an investment company nor investment into military and do not sell any investment. We sell education because education is at the heart of our company. Let's look at it. Folks, education at its best. When you talk about education and finance, remember we want to ignite a world of financial evolution. When you talk about education and finance, you talk about introduction to finance, money and monetary systems, behavioral finance and risk management. These things, when I saw these things for the first time, I, I, my mind was blown. I'm like, oh Lord, back to school. No folks, it's not a case of going back to school. Talk to the person that invited you, they will guide you. We have programs, we have lecturers that can help you and guide you through some of these programs. You do it at your own time, at your own pace. However, we would like you to learn today so you will be able to lead tomorrow. Forex industry. The forex industry, you need to know how to trade even with cryptocurrency, right? So, I mean, types of trading, the technical and fundamentals of trading. You have trading strategies, everything. This is education folks you cannot pay for, for the price you're getting it for. Even law, education and law, the legal definitions about cryptocurrency, economic evaluations, impacts on the traditional market, I mean, come on, we have legal implications for the regulators who will have to regulate cryptocurrency, it must be regulated. Cryptocurrency will be integrated into the system and we must pay tax on it. All these educational packages are coming your way once you get involved in this company. So let's take a simple look at a paragraph in the level one of the finance, introduction to finance. To spur economic growth, the central bank all around the globe introduced extraordinary measures. Main interest rates were lowered to negative territories while the printing press of the United States Federal Reserve 
and the European Central Bank seems to be running without a break. As we know right now with the pandemic, most countries are printing money to, as they say, ease up the situation. They just keep printing money. The Federal Reserve and European Central Bank seem to be running without a break. Another chapter, another paragraph in the level one says that many central banks have failed in the, in the respect. The aforementioned example of the Federal Reserve of the United States is a notorious one. Since after the establishment of this institute, institution in 1913, the dollar has lost over 95% of its value as of today. Robert Kiyosaki again, he says that the fractional reserve banking applies to everything, not only money or gold. The entire banking system is based on counterparty trusts. After Rich Dad explained, you know, he wrote his book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. So he's saying here, after Rich Dad explained the fractional reserve banking system to his son and I, he said he laughed every time he saw on his money in God we trust. Just imagine that. He went on to say, I do not trust anything paper. Anything paper is derivative, fake, something that requires a counterparty for value because literally it's just a piece of paper with some prints on it. Something must give it some form of value. He said, I prefer to trust God's money rather than the elite who print our money, run our governments, central banks, banks, bond markets and stock markets. So he preferred to trust God's money. So he said that God's money is gold. The dollar is government's money, which is currency. But cryptocurrency or virtual gold is the people's money. Folks, let us bring back the bartering system between us. I mentioned free and I said about free tokens, and I said about free education. There is free education for your kids. Ages five, between five to 12, in the form of a cartoon, Super Ted. There's also the, the hard copy books on it, but however, it's in on your back office. You can just click on it and you can download the information, read it for your kids. Trust me, the education that these kids are about to receive will blow your mind. And I have an example of a child that Apparently, she passed through our university. She's going to blow your mind in a bit. So teaching kids to count is fine, but teaching them what counts is best. Listen to this child. She's going to blow your mind. King, there's a lot of suckers at you with the money, and you can't be no sucker at you with your money. Bro, I ain't no sucker. I bet you I don't. Okay. What's assets? Assets are things that bring money into your bank account. What's liabilities? Liabilities are things that take money out your bank account. Entrepreneurship is the act of becoming an entrepreneur. What's entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a process of setting up a business for business. Taking on a greater than normal. Financial risk. What's an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is a person that organizes and operates a business or businesses. Also taking on a greater than normal. Financial risk. What's financial mean? Money. And what's risk mean? Chance. Come on. What does it mean to own stock? When you own a share of a company. Come on. What's real estate investing? Real estate investing is when you invest in a immovable property. What's the two types of real estates? Commercial real estate and residential real estate. What's commercial real estate? Commercial real estate as property for businesses and workspace, like an office store or land. And what's residential real estate? Property to live on, like a house, apartment, or condominium. Come on. It comes with extra fees when you have real estate, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Daddy tells you how many times he pays his pr uh, state property tax a year. Once a year. What's, what's the type of maintenance fee? Cutting grass. Come on. What's HOA? Homeowner Association. And what comes along with that? HOA fee. Come on. And when it comes to the brokerage percent, what percent is that? Seven. Come on. What's equity? Equity is the difference between what your business is worth minus what you own. Also assets minus? Liabilities and debt. Good job. What's credit report? Credit report is like a report card letting you know how well you did by paying your money back you borrowed. And how does credit affect your life? The better you keep your credit, the more opportunities you have to get funding. And what, large purchases like? A car or a house. Come on. And always repay what you owe. Because if you owe somebody, that means you're in. Debt. And you never want to be in. Debt. Because that means you're. 
owe somebody. And we don't never owe somebody. Cause that ain't what suckers do, period. Come on. Yeah, man. <laughs> I can see some of you feeling embarrassed out there right now. This child is well educated where finance is concerned. And folks, this is what we offer in the One Academy. So this is the prices. I know some of you are ready to start one time when you see that kind of education. So you get in where you can fit in. The starter package is just 143 euros. In TT dollars, that's just like 1,400 TT dollars because we have a special going right now. You can get serious discounts right now. There's also a spin the wheel promotion. Speak to the person that invited you. I don't have the time tonight to go into that. But there's lots of promotion. There's no better time than now to get involved. And as I said, you also get free promotional tokens, which go through a split. The split doubles your token, and then it, send it, it goes into the mining process and creates one coin for you. Talk to the person that invited you. Get on board. The prices vary. Get in where you can fit in. The price of this coin back in 2015 started at 50 cents euros and has climbed all the way last year, January 29.95. Today we stand at a proud 42.43 euros for one. But what causes this coin to keep going up in value? We have created, Dr. Rujain have wisdom, created an ecosystem around this coin. And because of the ecosystem, the coin goes up in value. We spoke of the One Academy. This is our education. The One Life is the network. We spoke of the One Forex. There's also a charitable arm that I omitted to mention a while ago, where we also give back. The Deal Shaker, I'm coming to that now, the most exciting part of this ecosystem. So you can become a franchise owner, or you can simply become a merchant on the Deal Shaker. These two elements are still missing. But in the next two years, we plan to compete this entire ecosystem. And by developing the elements of the ecosystem, we encourage the coins usability, functionality, and reliability. We'll talk about usability in a bit. So what does the one coin ecosystem aim to create? A world without inflation and interest on loans. A safe world without anonymity and illegal online activities. A secure yet involatile. Remember I said that Bitcoin is very volatile. A secure yet involatile payment option that will increase trade worldwide. A payment method which author authorities can count on and trust. Because again, if I pay you with cryptocurrency, my ones, $300 worth for your item, it remains at $300. I guarantee you the worst thing could happen is that it can go up in value, but it would not go down. So we are, the world is heading towards a cashless society. I will skip this video because it's a bit long in the essence of time. But let's make one coin more usable via the deal shaker. The deal shaker is an interactive commerce hub such as eBay or Amazon. The deal shaker levels the playing field where trade and money is concerned. Let's look at a someone, some part of the world, shopping, using the deal shaker in a supermarket and making some groceries. Uh, hello everybody, I'm here in Karikor in Biamper and now I will use the coupon have 50%, one coin 50% cash. And this is my grocery that I bought and then I will pay it later. We will see how it goes. This is all the things that I bought. So, we'll see. We will use the coupon. Okay. So, here goes. So, I just opened my my coupon and here you just give it to the to the cashier and then they scan it and then you're gonna pay everything on it mm -hmm. 
Now we have to throw because the QR code doesn't work. We are going to use it by man manually. We see if they will accept manually the code. It's a little bit long, but we have we need to have a face. They use it manually and it will succeed. Fatto? Fatto. Oh. Oh, fatto. Okay. Ed è uscita. Grazie mille. Ti uh, rimangono 8,44 euro. Okay. 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 ok. Grazie Quindi mille. Devi dare tutto codice. Sì, ok. Tutto il codice, anche quello tra parentesi. Tutto, tutto, tutto. Ok, tutto. Grazie mille. So folks, if you have any doubt in your mind whether this coin works, it works all over the world. As I said, we are in over 194 countries all over the world. These are the things you can shop and buy, similar to Amazon or eBay, or even better. Just look at it all over the world. And the power of this crypto is that the same value it has in Trinidad and Tobago, it has in Europe, it has in Africa, it has in India. All over the world, the value remains the same. And that's the power. These are the things you can buy, ladies. I know you love to shop. This here is some of our merchants right here in Trinidad. So it's all over. People are accepting this coin. These are the things you can buy. I doubt you can get this on eBay or Amazon. You probably get parts on eBay for it. But on the deal shaker, all these things are available. And the reason why this the goal is to become the number one cryptocurrency in the world. And the thing that will definitely get us here is usability. And we have usability of this coin. So as I'm about to close, I encourage you to join the financial revolution, the first transparent global cryptocurrency for everyone. You can either choose to become a pioneer or a user. Facebook, we are all users. Apple, some of us are users of Apple products. Bitcoin, some of us were fortunate to have some and are users of Bitcoin. But where the ones are concerned, I encourage you to become both a pioneer and a user. The decision is yours. And I leave you with this video. All of us suck in the beginning. All of us. But what you have to realize if you want to be a true champion in whatever it is you decide to do is this. You're going to suck in the beginning and guess what's going to happen? You're going to make adjustments. You're going to have little failures. You're going to have big failures. You're going to have people tell you you can't. You're going to have people hate on you. You're going to have people do everything negative that could possibly be done to you. But guess what? You are going to learn from every single one of those instances and they are going to make you better, which means the actions you take after those points are going to produce better results. Everybody's fascinated by luck or the big idea. It doesn't exist. You don't know a single person that's made it big unless they work their face off. So you can either choose to commit to that process or you could choose to put your finger and say, that guy's lucky. You got to embrace the trials. You got to embrace the tribulations. It ain't no shame to getting tired. It's no shame in feeling burnt out. But the trick is, say to yourself, I got to rethink it and get this thought out of my mind because the shame isn't quick. Whatever you do, don't let that thought become a reality. You have gone too far. You've invested too much time. You've given too much to quit now. You put too much time into it, too much effort. You cried too many tears, right? You're about to get certain things just because of the effort you put in, the time you put in. You're about to get a reward. There's some stuff you're about to get, but you're not gonna be able to get it until you wrestle. You can't just quit and give up on it because it's not coming in the time frame you thought it was gonna come. You just can't quit and give up because it don't look like you thought it should look. Things ain't going the way you thought they should go. No, you're gonna have to learn to wrestle with it. You're gonna have to learn to fight with it. You're gonna have to put in a little bit more sweat, a little bit more blood, a little bit more tears, but you gotta fight with that thing and tell that thing, you will quit before I quit. You'll give up before I give up, but I'm not gonna let you go until I get my blessing. 
So to those of us that are already on the arc of safety, the financial arc of safety, I say to you as our captain say, trust the process. Because if you don't come out of this quarantine with a new skill, your side hustle started, more knowledge, you never lack time, you lack discipline. I thank you together for more. Over to you, Debbie. Wow, 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 and uh, woo, that was a complete <laughs> presentation. Well researched, and you went there with the religion. But that's okay. That is included as well. Um, I am on my journey with this project. It's interesting. I'm learning a lot. I have had the news to show me a lot. Wow. I have to review this. Call at another time on OLN, our uh, OLN channel on YouTube because I really want to see this again. Um, right now, I'd like to call on someone. We, we have a few minutes left. I would like, like to call on Cliff or Donna or Cliff and Donna Samuel Singh to give a testimonial. Tell people how to do this. So, Thank you, hi. Donna. Hi, hi. Hi. Hi, hi. How are you going? I'm great. How are you? All right. Listen, awesome job being done by both you and Andel. Really, really great. Um, you know something? As I listened and I, what fascinated me the most is the research is being done by you guys beyond the chain. And, you know, that video with the little child, Gosh, boy, as Andel said, many of us must be feeling embarrassed, but thank God for one academy. I could lift my head high and say, hey, I know those things because of my one academy. You know, Andel, Noah did not speak tonight, but he has spoken before and you surely built and shared with us that the financial arc of safety is going to close soon. People, those of you who are out there listening, I hope you listened. Because what was said tonight is a wake-up call. If you were sleeping, this is the time for you to get up and financially position yourself to protect your income, to protect your wealth. You see, he said at the end, the decision is yours. You either be a pioneer and a user of one coin or you're out. You have a choice to make. You have a decision to make. So, Andel, kudos. Hats off. Debs, Debs, keep it going. Hold on, Cliff is here. Hey, good night, everybody. Good night. Um, Donna and I out in the yard listening to this. And like in most areas, I hope all, you know, the place looks almost deserted. Um, the thing is that the number of houses that we are in because of our neighborhood, most persons just looking at returning when business is open once again but it won't be business as usual. Things are not going to be the same, even though a lot of persons in my neighborhood uh, feel as though they're going to go back to their jobs and they're going to just pick up duties as it once was. It's not going to be like that. So what you're going to do? Wait until that moment hits you and then wonder where to go from here. What Nielsen just said is to prepare for what is to come. And he no need to tell you how to, what to prepare. He also offer you this, this potential solution. Why he could say that? Because like us, he has been in, uh, involved with this process for more than three years now. So he has some credibility in talking about this. Any of you guys here who on for the first time and hearing this message, we speak with a degree of certainty because we have seen where we have come from. And all that we have been experiencing recently with this pandemic and, and, and the bailout plans by the various governments, we have been warned that this would be the only solution that they have. And that has been failing. So why not come on board, experience something that is new, that is possibly going to, we, keep, we say it's possibly because at the end of it, we don't have a, a crystal ball. What we do know is that what has been served up in the past is not getting us to where we want to go. So you want a different outcome? Try something new. This is what it is to try that's different. 
I hope you guys understand what it is you are saying. If you don't understand, come on board and you'll get a better understanding. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you once again. Thank you, Chris and Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Leo. I thoroughly enjoyed tonight. I uh, I hope that you did too, our viewers all around the world. And you can catch us again tomorrow at the time, same place. Have a good night. Stay safe and uh, take care. Bye. Good night. Good night.